Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. This is David Shoemaker, and I'd like to welcome you to Living to Lima. Okay, so today's talk is on the Golden Dawn tradition in modern Thelema. Let me start by defining what I mean when I say Golden Dawn, because Lord knows uh, 100 years down the line from the original, more than 100 years down the line from the original founding of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, there's been so many offshoots and splinters and uh, modifications and uh, other elaborations that it's it's hard to know what someone means when they say Golden Dawn. But uh, the original Hermetic, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was founded in 1888, if I'm not mistaken. And, uh, um, of course, Aleister Crowley came in to, uh, to the Golden Dawn in 1898, which is his first uh, full ceremonial initiation experience, and he dated that as his magical birthday, so to speak. Um, the original Golden Dawn has a framework of ritual and teachings based on uh, what were called the cipher manuscripts. And these were manuscripts that were either written or discovered, depending on who you listen to, um, by the founders of the Golden Dawn and uh, contain uh, skeletal outlines of rituals and approaches to ritual that are uh, that were developed later into the, the the actual functioning rituals of the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Um, it's a degree system based on the Tree of Life, where each degree or grade, as they were called in those days, um, is based on one of the Sephiroth of the Tree of Life and the experience of going through the ritual, the, the tone of the ritual, the teachings of the ritual, and then the work you were to undertake during your time in that grade, um, all were designed to stimulate the, uh, the conscious and unconscious minds in terms of certain symbol sets and to encode those symbol sets to... Um, impress upon, again, the conscious and unconscious mind the the nature of the paths and the uh, sephiroth on the tree so that you're really building an internal map of these regions, these regions of the soul, if you will, regions of the universe. Um, and so it was, uh, to my mind, a very powerful way of getting that from the ground up instruction in Kabbalah, the uh, the foundational training and the basic correspondences, uh, the things kinds of things you would find in 777, uh, learning Hebrew alphabet, learning astrological correspondences, uh, all of those basic building blocks of ceremonial magic um, were encoded and and unraveled um, sequentially and, and progressively across the degrees of the the order. Now, uh, as I said, Aleister Crowley was initiated into the the uh, HOGD in 1898, and um, not too long after that, around 1900, uh, there was a schism in the order. Uh, Crowley was, uh, for a while at least, loyal to Mathers, one of the founders, and uh, uh, but then eventually he Crowley himself left left the order. Um, his experience in the Golden Dawn. Um, in terms of some of the negatives, honestly, some of the, the, the politics and the uh, the jockeying for grades and, and power and the social standing, uh, the uh, his perception that that progress was being uh, afforded or accorded to people um, purely based on their on their worldly possessions or their their outside social standing, these sorts of problems really turned him off. Um, of this kind of a system in in some ways. I also think that Crowley being such a genius and such a, f a quick study on some of the, the foundational materials, um, I, I, I think he underestimated the value of that type of basic preparation for aspirants to, to the great work. So when he went off and founded the AA, um, also a tree of life based system. Essentially what he did was he he ditched the 
entire preparatory experience of the First Order of the Golden Dawn and pretty much tossed people right in to the equivalent of a Second Order Golden Dawn experience. So uh, he was counting on people being able to sink or swim and just just come in with uh, with a minimum of background and study up and and learn all the material and, and then use it in more of a, a, a self-paced, self-study kind of approach with, with their one teacher as opposed to working in a social order. So um, with, uh, with all due respect to the amazing work that Crowley did in structuring the AA, I think he did remove something of value that many students have found useful. Now, you may be asking, useful how? <laughs> to what end? Um, in, in my experience within Thelema and my teaching capacity in various orders over the years, uh, I've noticed that when aspirants to AA have had um, the opportunity to go through some sort of more structured preparatory training um, where they have internalize the, the, the basic meanings and, um, again, those sort of inner zones corresponding to the paths and the sephiroth on the tree of life, and uh, they've really sealed up that system within themselves through their own experience. Then when they get to AA work later on, they um, they've hit the ground running, you know, and they've, they've got the, uh, the basic uh, memorization done. They've had the benefit of working with daily ritual already and keeping a diary and um, um, going through the, the internal transformative process that a first order system patterned on the Golden Dawn can provide. And um, I think that's really valuable for many students. Not every student needs that. Not every student wants that. But for those that are suited to it and want that and need it, it's really, really, uh, really, really useful. So um, what I'm going to try to do today is talk about how you can take the best of what exists in the, in the, in the basic Golden Dawn framework, sort of the, the landmarks of a Golden Dawn system, but bring that into a Thelemic context. And I'm going to talk about this mostly from the standpoint of the Thelemic Golden Dawn based order that I administer called the Temple of the Silver Star uh, because of course that's what I'm most intimately familiar with but uh, there are other Thelemic orders that incorporate Golden Dawn uh, traditions as well and so I, I don't want to try to speak for them but uh, it may be that a lot of what I see what I say today regarding Temple of the Silver Star which I'll call TOTS for short um, is um, you know, may be applicable to those other orders as well. So, uh, in case it's not apparent from what I've said already, um, one of the real benefits of fusing these two traditions, um, seeing the Lima as an elaboration and, and an expansion of the Golden Dawn instead of something that entirely replaces it, uh, brings several advantages. It um, it gives you that preparatory training. It also provides more structure for um, understanding the paths and the Sephiroth in the context of their Thelemic import. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about how we've updated the traditional Golden Dawn curriculum to be uh, workable in a Thelemic context and to make sense, really, in, in the new Aeon. So uh, there's several points that are really important here. The old Aeon Golden Dawn implementation uh, brought candidates to a climactic identification with Osiris as the initiator. The, the god form of Osiris was the symbolic initiator and, and really the uh, sort of the, the archetype with which candidates were supposed to identify with uh, as as the completed, perfected initiate. That's what you're shooting for. You're, you're trying to transform yourself into a perfected Osiris, right? Um, in, in the Tot system, the aspirant is Osiris right from the beginning. Um, 
before their first initiation even begins. They uh, walk in the door identified with Osiris. So what we are doing in, in our system is bringing each candidate, one candidate at a time, into the new Aeon uh, ritually. Uh, it's also a way of showing that we're in a new Aeon. Instead of uh, having Osiris as the main point of identification, we have Horus. Uh, we read in the Book of the Law, Rahur Queet hath taken his seat in the east at the equinox of the gods. Hur, in his secret name and splendor, is the Lord initiating. Um, this doesn't make too much sense unless you recognize that uh, we now have Rahur Queet taking his seat as the Hierophant in our, our temple and as the central archetype with which we identify as initiates. Also, importantly, um, in the old Aeon, we had a lot of emphasis on the LVX formula. I've done a podcast on the, the Lux and Knox formula uh, a couple years ago. Um, in the old Aeon, the Golden Dawn traditions had a lot of emphasis on the LVX formula as um, re as it relates to the dying god and in, as it relates to the idea of an external redeemer. So the climactic initiatory experience in, uh, in an old Aeon Golden Dawn approach would have a good bit of focus on being redeemed by some external force uh, and um, what we've tried to do in TOTS is remove that emphasis on the external redeemer and put the focus where we think it rightly should be in a more thelemic context, which is on redeeming ourselves and being reborn every moment into a new self, that child consciousness we read about in the Book of the Law and in Crowley's commentaries. Now, um, as we would hope and expect, I think, um, the rituals in TOTS have been transformed um, and we've had the benefit of uh, several incarnations of predecessor orders across the last century to uh, to help us with this because we you know it's a living tradition um, and the rituals have been have been updated to be entirely accord with in accord with the thelemic dispensation so um, we have the concept of true will as a central guiding principle we have that Osiris to Horus changeover I was mentioning earlier um, we have recast the ordeals and the mysteries connected with the Sephiroth and the paths and the, the tasks, the rituals themselves, uh, the personal work. Um, we've transformed all of that to be uh, in accord with new Aeon thinking, with, with, uh, with uh, Thelema. And we've also been able to continue a process of removing a sexist language and doctrines. We've also had the ability to benefit from a century's worth of death psychology, most particularly the work of Jung, uh, Asajoli, and folks like that, um, who have developed over decades really powerful transformational technologies um, that just weren't available at the time at the time of the original Golden Dawn, and really weren't available even in Crowley's lifetime for his work in AA. Um, now, in, in Tots in particular, we benefit from the connection to my teacher Sora Merrill, Phyllis Seckler, who had such a, a, a strong emphasis in her own teaching on psychological balancing, on self knowledge on um, the importance of uh, approaching magical work from the standpoint of a centered, balanced personality and not being blind to ego drives and to uh, you know those sorts of impulses in, in the lower personality that would tend to, to send us off course. And of course, uh, for me as a, as a Jungian oriented psychologist, I, uh, I bring a, a lot of uh, that influence into the way I've designed the order to work as well. So um, why would you want to do this work? Let's talk a little bit about, about the, the whys. If you want from the ground up training in Kabbalah, tarot, astrology, ceremonial magic, meditation, here's a structured way to, to get it. If you want progressive instruction in Thelemic philosophy, 
uh, with a specific focus on the discovery of the true will, here's a place to get it. We, uh, speaking of the true will, uh, as an example of how we've integrated it, um, no one mo no one moves from the first order into our second order until they are able to articulate as best they can at that level of understanding um, their true will in a, a simple phrase or sentence. Uh, that doesn't mean that that'll be an unchanging reality for them forever, but until they are able to get that into words based on a whole lot of um, in-depth personal work and development, then they don't progress into the second order. So the uh, Tefereth attainment in thoughts is not full knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel as it would be for the 5-6 of AA, but it is uh, sort of a lower octave version of that where there is some new awareness, a breakthrough of awareness about the spiritual purpose of the person. And we have a lot of tools to do that, both magical and psychological. Um, we teach specific uh, tools for um, building the ability to generate and channel magical force. Um, your skepticism on this point is welcome, as always, but uh, we have a technology that's been developed over well, millennia, of course, but in terms of our immediate predecessors over the course of more than a century, um, with each new successive order adding its own flavor and its new set of tools and its own personality. So if you're a beginner, all of those things will hopefully be useful. But even experienced magicians uh, who have done other Golden Dawn work or other Thelemic work uh, may find that the structure and the tools that we present in, in TOTS bring a new level of self-awareness and uh, a new dimension of understanding the Thelemic and Kabbalistic concepts. Now, another benefit of the work in TOTS, and it's important to some people and not important to others, um, we actually are a lineal descendant of the original Golden Dawn. Um, in an unbroken chain of uh, successor orders, where at each new iteration, um, advanced initiates from the second order, usually in upper administration, have branched off to form a new order. So this isn't people picking up uh, Regardi's Golden Dawn book and deciding to start an order. We actually are following from more than a century of unbroken tradition, hierophant to hierophant, initiator to initiator, from the HOGD. Now, finally, another reason that people might want to pursue this work with us specifically is that we do have um, a linkage to AA. Um, we are in service to AA. And as I said earlier, um, many people who have had, we, we have found that many people who have had preliminary training in, in TOTS have gone on to greater success in AA because of that running start that I was talking about before. Now, it's really incredibly important to emphasize that by joining Temple of the Silver Star, you don't join AA. It's not the same thing. Um, and um, it, it's I can't overstate how important it is to understand that. Um, the structures of the orders are entirely different. The administration is different. Um, AA functions on its own plane uh, in accordance with the uh, the landmarks that Crowley and Jones used to set it up. Um, but in TOTS, we help people prepare. I also want to emphasize that um, one joins AA by going through the traditional student curriculum and um, uh, that there's absolutely no requirement or expectation that anyone go through the Temple of the Silver Star system, or the courses of the International College of Thelema, which is its parent organization, um, there is no requirement or expectation that anyone proceed through TOTS or ICOT in order to enter AA. Uh, absolutely no expectation of that. These are separate things. They can complement each other, but they're not uh, uh, no expectation of, of uh doing one just because you're doing the other. Now, um, work in 
groups like Temple of the, of the Silver Star uh, is greatly enhanced by the ability to participate in the ongoing monthly ritual. Um, so to that end, we have groups um, forming around the world that uh, provide opportunities for people to, to participate in the monthly ritual, which has an emphasis on energy raising, healing, um, and magical instruction, and uh, the uh, unquestionable benefit of doing ritual in a group month in, month out, refining your ability to move energy, have a ritual presence, uh, develop skill in the very subtle aspects of, of conducting ritual and moving force. Uh, there's no replacement for just doing that on a regular basis with other people who are uh, oath-bound to do the same thing. So um, we have working groups in Sacramento, in Oakland, in Los Angeles, in uh, Norwich, England, and uh, new groups forming all the time. So, you know, I've told you quite a bit about Temple of the Silver Star specifically today, and uh, of course I want you to know about it. It's an order that I care about a lot and that I administer and and uh, have seen people benefit a lot from. But really, my primary aim was to show that the system of the Golden Dawn, the underlying skeleton of that system, has a lot to offer. And it can offer that within the context of Thelema and not merely um, in a sort of an old aeon context that many Thelemites might find to be uh, outdated or uh, lacking uh, some of the hallmarks of Thelema that they find dear. So I hope this has been interesting and useful for you, and I invite you to, to contact me if you have any questions, as always. And of course, if you have suggestions for future podcast episodes or any feedback on uh, this or any other episode, please don't hesitate to write to me at uh, david at livingthelema.com. And uh, that will be it for this time. So I'd like to thank you for listening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Love is the law. Love under will.